were to go over the removal of the high pressure pump from the engine. So a couple of things, this is a teardown engine, so it's a little easier to see. Plus it's on a stand so you can tilt it, which is nice. There's a bracket back here that I've already removed and the DC to DC converter, which would be in front of this. So it would be, you know, that definitely has to be removed. We have a few connections that we have to take place first. We have the fuel return line here, you have to take that off. Your fuel pickup that comes from the filter in the front of the engine. And then on the back side over here, we're gonna have the high pressure pump that fit. So the pump body here, there's a gear pump on this particular unit. Late model engines have a electric feed pump, but the early model D4, D6 with a CP3 pump, it's a three piston pump, uh, has a gear style pickup pump. So, so the only thing you have to do to prime the system is to go over to the filter housing and put your fitting on it and prime the filter. Once the filter is primed and bled, crank the engine over, this pump will very rapidly pull fuel through the system and push it out the return line. Uh, normally in less than 10 seconds the engine will start. I'll give you a little close up here so you can see a little better and that's your connection for your m -prop. This is your return line fitting. This is your feed fitting hose. Your high pressure pump line is up there. Now that fitting is a high pressure fuel line. That's going to be a steel fuel line. And what I tell people is if you remove that, that goes up to the fuel rail and that probably should be replaced as part of the pump removal. So if you have diagnosed the engine, doesn't have fuel pressure, you've checked the injection, you, you check your pressure with the Vodia tool and you have low, low fuel pressure, there's something wrong with the pump. The M prop would have a code if it had a problem. This is a replaceable part with two, three screws on it. There is a part number for that for the M prop as well. You could change that. Um, and then what you can do is replace the pump. Again, if you're gonna replace the pump, replace that fuel line, that high pressure steel fuel line. It, it's gonna have anywhere from 2,000 to 30,000 PSI in that steel line. So it's, it's uh, a good idea to change that. It takes a little work to get it in and out of there. Obviously, you have to take this top cover off, um, off the top of the engine to get at it, but um, that's one of the necessary things. So I'll pull the pump off next, and then we'll put it in a vise and show you the special tools to take the gear off. Don't forget that when you remove these fuel lines from the engine, you wanna change the banjo fitting washers. Um, it's just, you're, you're gonna be in here once, you don't wanna come back because it's leaking, um, especially if this is under warranty. But these banjo washers, you probably could get away with a second use, but for a, you know, a $2 banjo fitting, I definitely don't wanna you know, not replace these. Okay, so these are the washers. One goes in the bottom, one goes in the top. Pretty straightforward. What's nice is there are two different fittings, so there's no way to put the wrong pipe on the wrong spot. That's a bonus. Okay, now we have the high pressure line. I'm gonna pull that off. Now it gets a little confusing when you look if you're not paying attention in the book, but there are three bolts here that you would think maybe you take off. That takes the pump off the flange. You need to take the flange off the engine with the pump. So there are four bolts down. Here's one hidden behind. There's one there, that's two. There's three up here, and there's four in that back corner. So one, two, three, four bolts come out, then the pump will come out. So we're gonna pop those four bolts out. I believe they're all 12 millimeter. Looks like you guys can see pretty well. And it should just slide right out. And there it is with the gear on it. So we gotta get some special tools to pull that off. And that is a 27 millimeter socket. And using an impact gun on that, 
Um, but there is a special tool I'll show you on how to break it loose and put it in a vise. There is no timing mark on the gear. There is a timing mark here and a timing mark here on the housing. I've already timed the engine. So you can see those timing marks on the gear and on the housing here. And you line those up when you put the pump back in. Okay, next we're gonna take the uh, special tool 885-513, and that has two large pins welded into it, and they just nicely fit into the holes in the gear, so you can take a 27 millimeter deep socket and put it in there. So just clamp this in a vise, take the pump, Take your breaker bar and doop, take that bolt off. Now, once the nut is loose, you can remove that. Okay, same technique to put it back together. And now the gear might be stuck on there some, so what we need is we need this next special tool, which is 992679. And this tool is just a special puller that they've designed around this. So, Fits on the gear under the gear tooth. That on the pin. Obviously, with the nut removed, you simply just hold this with a pair of channel locks, maybe, and tighten this down and pop the gear off. Special, uh, you know, torque spec. I put a drop of blue Loctite on the threads when I put the nut back on and then torque it to spec again using this tool to hold it in place. So now you're ready to put it back together. Okay, so there are two marks. There's the marks. Okay. All right, next is the timing marks. When I'm ready to put the pump back on, okay, I need to line these timing marks up. So once they're lined up and the engine is timed with the pin and the crank and the two pins in the cam, then you're ready just to put the pump back on. It's a straight cut gear, so it'll slide right in place. Now I have the D6 here. We're gonna pull it, hold all the fasteners out that hold it down. They are a Torx bit number T30. So you need a T30 for all of these little Torx screws. And then this cover comes off, and I'm just gonna stick it sideways here to show you. Alright, so I've taken the liberty of already taking one of these two out. And let me zoom in so you can see that maybe a little better. Okay, I've zoomed in on the screws for the pins. And I've already broken one of these loose. And this fastener is 8 millimeter. It's on the ratchet over here. And uh, just to show you with a 3 8 ratchet, that I've got to put a lot of pressure. These are torqued in there. Yeah, so you can see they're tight. You're not getting those off real easy, All right? So that's factory torque. But this is where these two pins go. So you have these two pins, 885, 493, and they fit into both camshafts. So you have to lock the camshafts in place as well as the crankshaft if you're going to change the high pressure pump. So what I typically do is I bar the engine over first until one of these pins starts to drop in. Then I wiggle the other pin, and then what I'm gonna do is rock it back and forth until I get both of these pins in. Once they're in, then you can put the crankshaft pin. The crankshaft pin is on the back side of the engine. Flywheel end would be on the starboard side of the engine here if you're facing forward on a standard stern drive or inboard. Um, so these pins have to bottom out into the camshaft. You have to roll it over until they bottom out and also put the crankshaft pin in. Now you can time the pump to the gear, the high pressure pump and reinstall it. So I wanted to show you where those go. Don't forget to take them out as soon as you install the pump and you got some bolts in it, especially the one in the crankshaft because it's down low and you won't remember to take it out sometimes.